so if we see the key features of the prithvi uh, missile system indigenous development it is developed uh, within india so basically the prithvi is part of the we have one integrated guided missile development program so it is conceptualized during the we can say 1980s uh, abdul kalam abdul kalam Good morning students welcome back to Plutus AS right today is our 32nd day right today we will study the missiles and the missile systems so yesterday we have seen about the satellites different satellites and the satellite system today we will uh, study about the missiles and missile uh, we can say defy uh, missile defense systems right so first one is in that uh, series of missiles it is agni series right so agni series it is developed as a surface to surface uh, missile system surface to surface missile system right so basically agni series is a ballistic missile system so basically there will be two kinds of uh, missile system two types of missile systems one is ballistic missile ballistic missile next one is cruise missile so what is the difference between the major difference between the ballistic missile and cruise missile in ballistic missiles the trajectory will be like this so the missile will start from here uh, will go out of the atmosphere and it will re-enter and will hit the target so trajectory will be like this right so this trajectory when it is going upwards the fuel will be used so when we t uh, when it is re-entering and uh, when it is coming down only the gravitational force is used gravity is used and through that force the missile will be directed and the target will be hit so this is about the ballistic missile in cruise missiles there is uh, there is no parabolic direction or we can say trajectory like this so basically the missile will travel uh, we can say almost horizontal to the we can say surface of the earth so this is the major difference between the types of satellites both the ballistic missiles and uh, cruise missiles we will also uh, along with the missiles we will also understand whether that missile is a ballistic missile or cruise missile so basically agni is a ballistic missile it will use the gravitational force when when enter uh, when it re enters the we can say atmosphere of the earth right so it is one of the critical uh, i mean we can say it is the most important and the most critical uh, missile when it comes to india right <clears throat> so it has basically five variants the agni series has five variants from agni 1 to agni 5 right we will understand their uh, we can say variants also first we will see the key features of the agni missiles right versatility it uh, encompasses sector, uh, spectrum of ranges. We will understand the ranges when we study the five series. We can say five variants of the Agni. So basically it has lot of versatility. I mean it has different ranges and uh, I mean according to the use, according to the necessity, we can use different, we can say variants. Next is precision and accuracy. So this is also guaranteed through the Agni missiles. They are very precise and accurate. So they can accurately hit the target with we can say a minimum of we can say error right next play, payload flexibility so basically payload is the we can say the we can say the material which causes explosion so that is basically called as the payload so basically agni missiles can carry both conventional and even the nuclear warheads So in this way payload flexibility is also there right so it can carry both conventional and nuclear warheads right nuclear you know so basically the uh, nuclear nuclear bomb uh, atom bomb or hydrogen bomb can be placed in this water conventional means they will have different type of we can say the material that will explode right mobility and deployment here also it has a lot of flexibility so employing mobile transfer i mean we can launch these uh, we can say missile from the mobile 
platforms also plat forms also so what happens this uh, with the i mean when it has the capability of uh, uh, we can say deploying it from the mobile launch pads so we can escape the escape the enemy we can say enemy missile uh, defense missile missile systems will be there so they uh, i mean when they try to neutralize the agni missile whenever agni missile is last Uh, launched the enemy country will also try to neutralize this missile so when it has the i mean skp uh, when it has the capacity of being launched from mobile platforms so we can carry these missiles to anywhere and we can launch from the we can say remote or specific areas through this we can uh, we can escape the defense mechanism of enemy country right so these are the some of the key features of the agni missile now we will see the important part the variants of the agni missiles so basically there are five variants uh, agni 1 it is the first variant we can say it is short range ballistic missile so try to remember the range also range also very very important so depending on the situation and depending on the enemy country uh, the range also becomes very very important right so agni is a short range ballistic missile basically its range is uh, 700 to 900 kilometers it is called as short range ballistic missiles right similarly you understand one more thing is there the range short range intermediate range and uh, we can say intercontinental ballistic missile so basically there will be three ranges these ranges will also vary for uh, we can say ballistic missiles and cruise cruise missiles so basically the distant uh, distance covered by the cruise missiles it is comparatively low when we compare it to the ballistic missiles so the range also varies try to note this point also right next one is agni 2 so it is intermediate range ballistic missile range is 2000 to 300 km irbm intermediate range ballistic missile next is agni 3 so it is also irbm intermediate range uh, ballistic missile the range comprises from 300 3000 to 5000 km right next one is agni 4 variant it is also intermediate range ballistic missile so the range varies uh, between 3500 to 4000 km so try to remember here the range of the agni 3 missile is comparatively higher when we compare it to the uh, agni 4 missile this has been adjustment has been made to meet the specific requirement meet the specific requirements right so basically if you have an understanding about the we can say uh, the perceived enemy countries of india both pakistan and china and when you see uh, the threat to perception from these countries so you will understand why we need all these types of missiles we will uh, we will uh, we are going to see almost 15 to 16 types of missiles both ranging from short range 2 to 3 kilometers to uh 5000 6000 km ranges so when you understand the threat perception and the various types of threats uh that are there from even uh, the threats are in, arising from intercontinental ballistic missiles to even the border threats as you all know the border between india and pakistan are and also the border between india and china it is there are a lot of contentions and there are a lot of problems are there so taking into all these aspects into consideration the we can say india's missile profile has been designed and according to the specific needs the missiles have been developed so try to uh, keep this point also in mind so accordingly according to the need this uh, type of uh, variation in the range can be seen next is very 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 important we can say the agni 5 variant it is the we can say most powerful most powerful uh, missile uh, system that exists in india now so it is the most powerful one so it is intercontinental ballistic missile i mean inter uh, intercontinental ballistic missile when it is called when a particular we can say missiles range crosses 5000 kilometers so basically agni has the capability of touching 5000 to in fact 5000 to 6000 kilometers right so uh, through this uh, this particular missile agni 5 missile so india has the capability of if you we are launching from uh, here 
so we can cover major parts of the china also through this agni 5 missile so basically intercontinental ballistic missile what it uh, name suggests is so we are hitting the targets in lo that are located in different continent so basically through the agni 5 missile we have the capability of uh, covering all the targets that are located in india uh, sorry in china uh, by launching from india so agni has that capability we have achieved that capability through the agni missile through the specifically to be specific through the agni 5 so it is uh, because of this reason it is known as intercontinental ballistic missile we can say very few countries have this capability uh, the capability of launching intercontinental ballistic missile right so this is all about agni series we can say it is the most important series most important series so whatever the questions have been asked from, uh, from this topic they have uh, they have mostly asked from the agni C on the agni series only so try to remember all these aspects about the agni series next is uh, prithvi series it is also very very important so it is also the we can say surface to surface it is designed to i mean launch from the surface to and uh, launched from the surface and to hit the targets on the surface so basically it is also surface to surface uh, missile system similar to that of agni or but agni is a we can say it is a long range basically intermediate range and a long range missile system prithvi is a short range missile system more predominantly predominantly it is a short range missile system right so it is a it is well known for short range tactical ballistic missile system right so each one of the variant it has basically three variants so each uh, stage has designed to fulfill specific operational requirements and the strategic objectives so basically it is i mean uh, we can say on a lighter uh, note it is said that we have built agni for our big, big brother that is china and uh, we have built the prithvi series uh, for our we can say chota bhai or uh, little brother that is uh, prithvi missile so on a lighter note that it is being said so right so to meet the specific of operational requirements as i have uh, as i have explained so there are uh, the issues are ranging from border issues to the threat is also coming from the we can say intercontinental ballistic missiles so to meet those specific needs uh, a, a various range of satellites uh, we can say sorry missiles have been built right now we will see the variants of prithvi prithvi 1 it is a short range tactical ballistic missile so it is optimized for engaging targets in close proximity to india's borders so especially the targets in we can say pakistan right so its range is 150 kilometers to 250 kilometers it is a short range tactical ballistic missile similarly prithvi 2 it is a it is also a short range tactical ballistic missile uh, it is suitable for striking targets within the neighboring regions swiftly swiftly and effectively its range is 250 kilometers to 350 kilometers right so now uh, its range is 2500 uh, kilometers to 3000 uh, sorry 250 kilometers to 350 kilometers it is short range tactical ballistic missile similarly agri 3 uh, sorry prithvi 3 it is the latest variant in the prithvi series offering incremental improvements in both range and performance so range and performance have been increased right the range is 350 to 600 kilometers it is also short range tactical ballistic missile right so if you see the range uh, the prithvi is covering from 150 kilometers to 600 kilometers if you observe agni series it is starting from 700 to uh, we can say from 700 to it is covering like 5000 to 5000 to 6 5000 to 6000 kilometers so you can say through both these missile systems the range that has is uh, that has been covered is 150 to 6000 kilometers right so there are another uh, further short range missiles basically they come under the under the category of cruise missiles they are filling these gaps similarly there are some 
uh, anti tank missiles are also there tank uh, missiles like nag anti tank missiles though uh, basically this has the range of 2 to 3 kilometers so there are variety of missiles that are covering the range from shortest of 1 to 2 kilometers to even 6000 kilometers right so as we understand as we see all the missiles we will also come to understand this aspect also right so if you see the key features of the prithvi uh, missile system indigenous development it is developed uh, within india so basically the prithvi is part of the we have one integrated guided missile development program so it is conceptualized during the we can say 1980s uh, abdul kalam abdul kalam he is the brain behind this integrated guided missile development program right so basically there were five variants in this guided missile uh, development program first component was agni so it is aimed to provide medium range to long range we can say uh, coverage similarly prithvi was there prithvi is there in this program so it is also both these are surface to surface missile systems covering short range to we can say long range we can say missile defense system similarly akash is there akash is there so it is surface to air surface to air missile system i mean we are launching a missile from surface to target the to target the uh, we can say uh, to target the targets in the air so especially the aircrafts or the we can say ro rocket launching we can say helicopters or planes so we are through this akash missile missile we are targeting those uh, we can say enemy systems similarly trishul was there trishul was there so it is say we can say air to air missile system so it is being launched from air to air right similarly nog was there nog is there it is anti tank missile system to it is to destroy the enemy tanks when the battle is taking place on the ground we can say uh, we can say uh, on the borders or when the battle is taking place on the ground so through nag missiles we can destroy the enemy tanks so this completed this range is uh, ranging from 1 to uh, 3 kilometers it is range is like 10 to 15 kilometers the uh, trishul so basically the uh, range of akash missile is ranging from 20 25 kilometers to so few 100 kilometers and the rest of the range is covered by agni and prithvi missiles so basically these five have comprised the integrated guided missile development program right it is started uh, during the 1980s and in 2008 itself a declaration has been made by isro that the integrated guided missile development program has been complete complete in the year of 2008 itself um, which means all these variants have been developed and ready for deployment as and when necessary right so this has completed with the we can say testing of successful testing of agni 5 right so basically uh, the prithvi series which is also part of the integrated guided missile development program so it is developed uh, uh, with our own technology we can say flexibility and versatility it is there so it can be launched uh from the mobile we can say mobile platforms and it is also lot of uh, versatility i mean uh, variations are there precision uh, and reliability it is also one of the important features of the prithvi missile system strategic deterrence so basically it is one of the important aspects about the prithvi system strategic deterrence so it is uh, plays a, it plays a pivotal role in india's strategic defense program so basically we will also understand the defense program india's missile defense program we will understand it it in the, uh, in the end of the we can say end of this lecture so uh, defense uh, we can say defend uh, defense mechanism is basically so apart from having the capacity of launching the missiles i mean launching the missiles to target and destroy specific targets in the enemy country so we should also have the capability of 
uh, we can say intercepting the whatever the threats or the whatever the missiles that are coming from the enemy countries so basically when we intercept and destroy those missiles which are coming from the enemy's countries it is known as the missile defense system it is known as the missile defense a system or missile defense program so prithvi plays an important role in that uh, we can say strategic deterrence or uh, we can say defense program so basically prithvi uh, missiles are capable of uh, destroying the incoming enemy missiles uh, we can say that so it plays an important role in that strategic deterrence right 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 its presence the presence of prithvi it enhances in india's responsibility to engage uh, emerging threats that are coming from the enemy countries so these are the some of the key features of the prithvi series right so here in the image you can see the prithvi uh, prithvi we can say prithvi missile next one is brahmos uh, it is also very very uh, important so basically this missile has been uh, named after the two important rivers both in india and russia so it is the basically uh, the brahmos missile is the outcome of the collaboration between india and russia so we have developed this missile uh, basically with the collaboration uh, with the collaboration of russia it is a joint project of both russia and india so these uh, names uh the name comes from the Im two important rivers of india and russia if we see the key features of the crew uh we can say brahmos missile so basically this is the image of the brahmos missile so it is a cruise missile i have already explained the difference between what is the uh, ballistic missile what is a ballistic missile and what is a cru cruise missile so basically the trajectory or a trajectory of the cruise missile that will be horizontal basically most of the time it will be horizontal to the surface of the earth or we can say horizontal to the terrain uh, however the ballistic missile it uh, have a, this kind of trajectory so it will go up into the atmosphere at uh, sometimes it will go out of the atmosphere also again it will re-enter so this will be the trajectory of the uh, ballistic missile so basically brahmos is a cruise missile right S similarly it is also it has the capability of supersonic speed supersonic is <coughs> more than the speed of the sound speed of the sound right so basically uh, speed of the sound is measured in mac m a c h so it is a it travels up to uh, we can say 2.8 to 3 mac so means it uh, travels up to three times more than the speed of the sound right so basically the, we call this as supersonic uh, cruise missile technology because uh, it almost travels uh, three times to that of the speed of the time right <clears throat> so basically it is a cruise missile if we see the key features so it is a supersonic missile so travels faster than the speed of the si at, uh, speed of the sound almost thrice the speed of the sound it is the designated speed of the brahmos missile precision guidance so basically the, for the cruise mis cruise missiles the guidance guidance or trajectory is very very important trajectory is very very important so because because of that it is equipped with advanced guidance systems including gps and uh, interior navigation systems are there also active radar homing is there so because of all these features it ensures precise targeting of both stationary and moving targets with pinpoint accuracy so uh, uh, brahmos missile can target both stationary stationary and moving targets so because of the advanced and precision guidance mechanisms incorporated in it so it can target uh, both stationary and even moving targets with pinpoint accuracy right similarly multi platform launching capability so it can be launched from multiple pla platforms including land based mobile launchers uh, naval vessels so we can launch it from uh, 
we can say oceans also and also aircraft we can launch it from the aircraft also so uh, through this uh, versatility we can target both uh, land attack anti ship we can attack the land targets and uh, ships we can also target the ships and we can uh, employ it in precision strike uh, we can say missions right so similarly uh, uh similar to agni and uh, prithvi it also has some variants but this variation is different so basically it has three variants brahmos has three variants first one is brahmos ng so it is a lighter and a more compact variant designed for air launched and submarine launched configurations so brahmos ng is a lighter variant of brahmos so basically this has been developed to make possible to launch from the uh, aircrafts so air launched uh, air it can be used for air launching and submarine launching right similarly brahmos er so brahmos extended range so basically it has been developed to increase the range of the brahmos increase the range of the range of the brahmos missile so generally the range of the brahmos missile is 280 kilometers to 300 kilometers so to increase this range brahmos extended range er has been we can say uh, developed so it is uh, i mean it is currently under development so aimed at further enhancing the missile's capability right the last variant is brahmos m so it is a naval variant it is optimized for anti ship and land attack missions deployed deployed on indian navy ships so basically it is a naval variant it can be it, it is deployed on the we can say naval vessels and it can target the ships and uh, land targets also of the enemy countries right this is some of the important information about the brahmos missiles next is uh, nearby so it is also a cruise missile system right but it has the subsonic subsonic speed we have seen brahmos is a supersonic super sonic cruise missile however nearby is a subsonic uh, we can say uh, cruise missile system because because it is subsonic i mean it travels lesser than the speed of the sound so advantage of it is so it uh, it has enhanced fuel efficiency i mean it consumes uh, relatively lesser fuel so it has longer loiter time i mean it has the longer time longer loiter time i mean it has more time to monitor and roam and monitor the target similarly reduced susceptibility so because its speed is low the radars enemy system uh, we can say radars of enemy country radars of enemy country cannot cannot detect it so remember one of the important criteria for the missile systems are to be they have to we can say deceive the deceive the enemy systems radar so enemy enemy countries radar enemy countries radar so basically uh, radars are basically we can say uh, it is uh, they are sensors that will detect the uh, missiles of the enemy countries so basically the one of the important characteristic of a missile is to evade the radars of the enemy countries so this uh, nearby has the, that particular capability similarly because of its reduced speed it provides long range capability so its range is approximately 1000 kilometers to 1500 kilometers so through this range it can strike targets deep within the enemy territory enemy territory that to with uh, we can say precision right so versatile payload types so different type uh, types of payloads can be attached to it including conventional warheads and uh, sub munitions and other specialized specialized munitions depending on mission requirements similarly one one of the other important feature is terrain hugging and the terrain counter matching capability terrain hugging is as we have already understood basically the trajectory of the cruise missiles will be that will be horizontal to the surface of the earth terrain hugging capability is 
the missile flies very close to the surface of the earth very close to the surface of the we can say earth so what is the advantage of uh, going very close to the surface of the earth the enemy radars will not detect this missile so it it can evade the uh, the radar system of the enemy country so that is the one important advantage right so this capacity enables missile to evade enemy detection and interception enhancing its survivability on the battlefield so that is the advantage provided by this nearby cruise missile system so its uh, speed is less than the brahmos missile but the range is higher right so here you can see the uh, nearby nearby cruise missile see how it is flying very close to the surface of the earth right so similarly it has both land and sea launch capability giving it more strength right next one is uh, shaurya missile system it has the it ha also has the capability of launching from surface to surface right so if we see the features of this missile uh, shaurya missile it has hypersonic speed hypersonic is many times so that uh, i mean many times than that of the sound of the speed right so whenever the mac speed of the uh, any particular missile it is more than 5 it is called as hypersonic so we have seen brahmos it is supersonic supersonic so the range is from 2.8 to 3 mac however the speed of the shaurya missile is mac 7 so it can travel up to up to the speed of uh, speed of mac 7 so whenever it tra travels more than 5 uh, times that of the speed it is called as hypersonic speed hypersonic speed so basically shaurya missile has the capability of traveling with hypersonic uh, speed so seven times more than that of the speed of the sound so its capability is surface to surface capability so it will be launched from the surface to target the to target the ta to uh, hit the targets on the surface of the earth so it is optimized for engaging land based targets with the precision and the lethality right uh, one of the important uh, another uh, feature is maneuverability so it is designed to highly maneuverable during the flight tra trajectory allowing it to perform an evasive maneuvers so it can do many maneuvers Uh, so that it can evade the we can say enemy country's missile defense systems right so it en enhances its survivability in the battlefield battlefield so this capability makes it challenging for uh, intercepting the missile and destroying it right similarly quick uh, quick reaction time so with hypersonic speed and rapid response capabilities it provides the indian armed forces with quick reaction capability so whenever our uh, we can say one of uh, the targets in our country are hit i mean we are hit by the enemy country's uh, missiles so we can respond quick and uh, we can launch a counter attack so through the shaurya missile uh, we have got or the indian forces have got that capability right similarly it can uh, tra carry both conventional and nuclear warheads So here in the image you can see the Shaurya missile. Right, is it is a cruise missile, a hypersonic cruise missile. Right. Next one is Akash missile. So it is also part of the we have seen inter, uh, integrated guided missile development program. So it is part and parcel of it. So if we understand the key features of it, it is a it has the medium range. capability so basically it is launched from surface to hit the targets in the air so <clears throat> it has the it has the medium range so it is optimized for engaging targets at the medium range typically up to 25 to 30 kilometers so i already told so the range is different for ballistic missiles and cruise missiles so here uh because this uh, akash missile it is launched from surface to air so this range 25 to 30 kilometers this range becomes medium range right so when the uh, missile is launched from surface to surface 
there the range becomes different there right so it is a medium range uh, missile uh, uh, i mean capable of hitting targets approximately in the distance of 25 to 30 kilometers right surface to air capable uh, air capability so it is launched from surface to hit the targets in the air so it is deployed on mobile launchers and integrated into defense networks to detect track and engage aerial targets so basically the targets will be aerial targets right next is multi target engagement so at a time single we can say missile it can target multiple targets it can hit the multiple targets right so basically so simultaneously it can hit multiple targets uh, so because of its sophisticated radar so because it has sophi a sophisticated radar it can simultaneously target multiple targets right similarly similar to saurya missile it has it also has high maneuverability i mean it has difficult we can say path system so that it can evade the enemy uh, enemy radars and enemy defense miss missile systems right so enabling this uh, system to intercept fast moving aerial targets with agility and accuracy right similarly it also has versatile deployment options so it can be deployed in various operational scenarios including stand alone air defense units integrated air defense networks and point defense systems for protecting specific high value assets right similarly it is part and parcel of the integrated air defense system we will also see about india's air defense system so akash is part of the integrated air missile system uh, de defense system so akash is designed to be integrated into india's integrated air defense system completing other air defense assets such as ra radar systems and the fighter aircraft right so i already told not only we we should have the capability of striking other countries but we should be in a place to protect ourselves from the attacks of the other countries other enemy countries so for that purpose also we should have missiles so akash comes into that cap uh, category right here in the image you can see the mounted and operational ready akash missile systems thanks so barak 8 so it is we can say barak is the outcome of the uh, we can say coordination between india and israel right so it is a collaborative effort between india and israel so it is designed to provide long range surface to air defense capability similar to akash barak 8 also uh, has the capability of launching from surface to target the uh, we can say target uh, targets in the air right long range capability so it is uh, to designed to engage aerial targets at long ranges from 72 to 70 to 100 kilometers right so it is complementing the efforts of the akash missile right <laughs> akash is to defend uh, the we can say medium range targets here barak is defending the long range targets from 70 to 1000 100 kilometers right uh, another important feature is it has dual navigation navigation guidance system so it has both active radar homing it is one type and radio frequency radar seeker radars so it has both types of radars so it is one of the major strengths of this we can say missile so this navig uh, dual navigation guidance system enhances the missile's accuracy and reliability ensuring effective engagement of multiple targets simultaneously right similarly it has the capability of multi missions targeting the multi missions right so it ha it has the capability of performing multiple air defense missions including point defense area defense and a fleet defense making it a versatile asset for protecting both individual assets and larger operational areas similarly uh, one of the import other important features is versatile launch capability so it can be launched from vertical launch systems installed on naval vessels as well as land based launches right so because of this reason it is providing the flexibility in deployment 
and integration into existing air defense systems right so this uh, uh, capability of vertical launch capability it enables rapid response to emerging threats and enhances survivability of the launch platform right right so this is the barak uh, we can say this is the barak missile and uh, this is the launch system right next one is nag missile system so it is also part and parcel of integrated guided missile development program so it is a third generation anti tank anti tank guided missile so basically <coughs> right it is designed to provide indian army with the potent anti tank capability so tanks as you all know this is the tank so basically it we it is launched from the tanks so basically it has the capability of destroying the enemy country's tanks enemy country's tanks right so uh, to counter armed threats on the battlefield so basically when there is a battle on the uh, i mean battle on the ground let's say uh, the uh, on the border so this uh, nag missile becomes very very handy to destroy the tanks of the enemy countries so it is it has the fire and forget capability so it features fire and forget capability allowing it to uh, autonomously track and engage armored targets with the precision right this feature reduces the need for uh, continuous guidance uh, from the operator enabling swift and effective engagement of targets right so it also has the top attack profile right it utilizes top attack profile where the missile strikes the target from above exploiting the weaker armor on the vehicle's roof so right so this has the top attack profile similarly uh, the technology used in this uh, missile is thermal imaging infrared seeker technology so it is equipped with this advanced thermal imaging infrared seeker uh, technology enabling it to detect and track targets effectively even in adverse weather conditions and low visibility environment right so these are the some of the important features of the nag missile right another important missile is astra missile right so it is beyond visual range air to air missile system so it uses beyond visual range air to air missile technology right so it is uh, also developed by isro so basically it is designed to provide the indian air, air force with the potent potent air defense capability against wide range of aerial threats right so integration with the fighter aircraft so astra is designed to be integrated onto various fighter aircraft platforms of indian air force including tejas so tejas is india's light combat aircraft light combat aircraft so uh, the astra missile can be integrated uh, uh, can be deployed on tejas similarly sukhoi uh, sukhoi we can say fighter aircrafts and also uh, uh, the future platforms like rafale so rafale also we have started acquiring some of the rafale aircrafts have been have come to india so astra missile can be deployed on rafale aircrafts also right so operational it has lot of operational flexibility right with its ability to engage multiple types of aerial threats including enemy aircraft helicopters drones and cruise missiles so it can intercept any of these enemy uh, we can say targets and uh, it can destroy them right so it is a air to air missile air to air missile generally mounted on tejas sukhoi or rafale right next is prahar missile system so it is short range tactical ballistic missile right so quick reaction strikes so basically prahar enables the quick reaction so whenever india is attacked so we can respond very quickly quickly to those attacks right so it is optimized for quick reaction strikes allowing the indian armed forces to swiftly engage targets with the precision and lethality right 
so this capability makes it well suited for addressing emerging threats and dynamic battlefield scenarios right similarly it has the enhanced precision and reliability so that the we can say it can be deployed quickly and we can target the enemy systems so here in the image you can see the prahar missile system right it is a uh, remember it is a short range uh, tactical ballistic missile system just like prithvi right next one is uh, k15 or it is also known, known as b05 sagarika so it is submarine launched so basically uh, the i mean capability of launching from the submarine basically <laughs> it can be uh, it ha it will be launched from the submarines so it is a submarine a submarine launched ballistic missile system right it has the short range capability so it is designed to be a short range uh, uh, i mean submarine launched ballistic, ballistic missile system with an estimated range of around 700 to 750 kilometers right so basically it is uh, deployed on the arihant class submarines so basically arihant class arihant class submarines are they are nuclear powered nuclear powered so in normal we can say uh, submarines uh, diesel is used dae diesel is used to power the submarines so so the disadvantage with the we can say diesel powered submarines uh, disadvantage with the diesel powered submarines is so often they have to come to the surface Uh, for the requirement of oxygen, as you all know, to burn the diesel or uh, for that matter petrol, we need oxygen. So oxygen to we can say capture the uh, oxygen, uh, the submarine is often has to come to the surface. So this is the one disadvantage. So whenever it comes to the surface, there is a chance that the submarines are identified or detected, detected by the radars of the enemy countries. so the advantage with the nuclear powered submarines is so there is no need for coming uh, uh, frequently coming to the surface of the water because the entire energy is provided by the nuclear small nuclear power plant that is situated within the submarine itself so basically sagarika it is uh, designed to be placed in the we can say arihant class the submarines arihant class the submarines are they are nuclear powered right so it is sagarika is deployed on the arihant class submarines right so it has a compact design and the stealth so it features compact design allowing it to be launched from submarine tor torpedo tubes right so its a stealthy launch capability enhances survivability of submarine so when a particular missile is launched from underwater submarine so it has the more capability of hitting the targets because the enemy countries will not be in a position to detect detect the attacks that are emerging from sub surface under water so that is it is the major advantage right similarly there is a concept called nuclear triad right so nuclear triad concept called nuclear triad so this uh, triad is capability of launching a nuclear weapons from three areas one is from surface second is from air and of third is from uh, we can say submarine submarine or we can say we also call it as subsurface or from the water so when arihant class submarines have been designated i mean they have been built in india and this sagarika they have been installed so india achieved or completed this triad capability so from these three areas from surface from air and also from underwater we can launch a we can launch a nuclear attack now right so we can launch a nuclear attack now the two that submarines are also nuclear powered so there is a very very less chance of uh, detecting these submarines because they are nuclear powered and they need not come to the surface of the water to grasp the oxygen so through this uh, we can say through this capabilities india has achieved the 
nuclear we can say nuclear triad it can launch attacks from the three themes that is from surface that is from air and also from und under water so through the uh, i mean through the achieve uh, this achievement through the building of uh, sagarika the nuclear deterrence of india has been we can say complete or it achieved saturity right the development of k15 sagarika it strengthens the nuclear deterrent deterrence posture by providing a sea based nuclear deterrent with short range capability so it enhances india's ability to retaliate effectively against potential adverse adversities and ensures st strategic stability of the region right so through the we can say sagarika k15 the india's nuclear triad has been complete right next one is k14 it is intermediate range uh, submarine launched ballistic missile so basically here we can see the class uh, k class sub, uh, we can say the missiles are they all are launched from the under they are launched from under water so k15 it is a uh, we can say short range tactical ballistic missile k4 it is a intermediate range submarine launched ballistic missile similarly we have k5 so it is a long range submarine launched ballistic missile so in uh, whenever it comes to the underwater attacks also we are trying to complete all the three ranges short range intermediate range and long range so here k15 is used here k4 is used and here k5 is used right so they are all launched from the uh, submarines right so here intermediate range capability so the range is around 3500 kilometers it is designed to be an intermediate range uh, we can say uh, submarine launched ballistic missile system right so it can it can be deployed on indigenous uh, we can say uh, submarines similarly the arihant class which are powered by the nuclear power plant right similarly the k5 long range submarine missile uh, we can say technology it is also being developed so the range generally exceeds more than 5000 5, kilometers right right so basically it is under development so it is intended to deployment on india's future submarine fleet ensuring that upcoming naval platforms are equipped with advanced potential ballistic missile systems so uh, from surface to air surface to surface surface to surface we have achieved maturity we have both agni and prithvi similarly when the attacks are being launched from we can say underwater underwater through the k class we can say missiles k15 k4 and k5 we are trying to achieve the saturation here also completing uh, all the three ranges short range intermediate range and long range or we can say intercontinental submarine launched ballistic missile capability right right now we will understand about the india's missile defense program right so it is a strategic initiative undertaken by india to develop and deploy a comprehensive missile defense system so basically missile defense system is so whatever the enemy missile uh, missiles that are coming towards india we are in a position to uh, intercept and destroy those missiles uh, before the damage is being done so that is basically the missile defense program right so the components of uh, india's missile defense program are ballistic missile defense uh, systems will be in place so so basically a fleet of ballistic missile defense system will be placed the, it is one of the important feature similarly there is a prithvi air defense and uh, uh, advanced air defense systems are there right similarly long range radars are deployed to track and trace the enemy enemy missiles right similarly there will be command and control centers which monitor and guide these we can say guide the responses to the uh, we can say the enemy attacks that are occurring on india right so in our defense system 
uh, to intercept and destroy the enemy missiles. So we have uh, we have acquired S-400 missile defense systems. So basically, these have been acquired from Russia. So there are a lot of challenges when we were acquiring these uh, systems. We can say because there were controls on the we can say importing of defense uh, de defense equipment or for that matter defense technology. So there are um, several agreements also, right? So India was facing a lot of uh, challenges, especially USA is very much. USA was very much opposed to this importing of S-400 missile systems, right? However, we are able to uh, import these missile systems successfully. Similarly, Turkey also there. Turkey has also acquired uh, acquired these S-400 anti-missile defense systems. So here in the image systems, we, you can see S-400 missiles, right? So it is a highly advanced surface to air missile system developed by Russia. So it is designed to provide air defense against a wide range of aerial threats, including aircraft, drones, and a ballistic and cruise missile. Right. So it is known for long range detection and engagement capabilities, as well as its ability to track and engage multiple targets simultaneously. Right. So India has signed a deal to acquire S-400 systems in uh, October 2018. Now we have uh, got the systems also, right? So it uh, after the acquisition of this S-400 systems, we can say our defense capability, uh, defense capability has improved a lot, has increased a lot, right? So this is all about S-400 defense uh, system, missile defense systems. Right now, we will see some questions uh, from this topic. So, basically, the questions are asked from the uh, based on the Agni missile only. In future, in the coming examination, there is a chance that the questions can be asked from other, uh, we can say, missile missiles also. Right? Qu uh, question first question it is asked in 2023. Question is consider the following statements. Statement one ballistic missiles are jet propelled subsonic speed throughout their flights and uh, and while cruise missiles are rocket powered only in the initial phase of the flight so you can see this is a wrong statement basically ballistic ballistic missiles are rocket powered so the technology whatever involved in the ballistic missiles is to i mean to whenever they are being launched so uh, the technology that is used for launching the satellites that technology is used uh, and also this statement is also uh, not correct sometimes they uh, reach the we can say speed of the sound so they go beyond the speed of the sound i mean they are supersonic they can be supersonic and hypersonic right so the crew missiles are uh, rocket powered and initial uh, no basically we can interchange this basically ballistic missiles are rocket powered and they have the trajectory of a parabola however the cruise missiles they have the flatter trajectory so this statement is incorrect first statement is incorrect next one is agni 5 is a medium range supersonic cruise missile uh, while brahmos is a solid fueled intercontinental ballistic missile so this is a wrong statement here also we can interchange the statements so basically brahmos is a supersonic cruise missile whereas agni missile is a intercontinental ballistic missile uh, we can say solid, solid field intercontinental ballistic missile. So both the statements are uh, incorrect or correct option is option D. Neither one nor two are correct statements. Next question, it is asked in 2014. Question is, with reference to Agni 4 missile, which of the following statements are, is or are correct? Statement 1, it is a surface to surface missile. Yes, this is a correct, correct statement. It is fueled by liquid propellant only so this is uh, incorrect basically it is fueled by solid propellant next is it can deliver one ton nuclear warhead about 7500 kilometers away so this is also a wrong statement because the range is 3500 to 400 kilometers for agni 4 missile so here statement 2 and 3 are incorrect only statement 1 is correct so correct option is option a uh, statement 1 only is correct 
right so this is all for today thank you thank you for uh, joining the class see you next time until then have a good day right see you next time. Thank you.